This is part of a tutorial created for students studying in the Ocean and Naval Architectural Engineering Discipline at Memorial University of Newfoundland's Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. Today's tutorial is intended to provide an example of the import procedure used for a third-party CAD model into the MaxSurf suite, and the basic steps needed to make sure that the axes are set appropriately in the model for further use within the MaxSurf suite. Today's lecture examines some of the basic considerations for preparing a hull design created by a third-party CAD package for use in MaxSurf. As designers, we may have to use a variety of programs to bring our designs to life, or we may choose to use different programs for their ability to perform certain functions better than other similar programs, or simply because we are more familiar with the operations in one software versus a competing software. For many naval architecture applications, software designers have recognized that the industry moves between design packages and the coders have taken steps to ensure the process is relatively smooth. However, before you take any actions in a software program that your model was not natively designed for or in, it is important to make sure that the model is situated in the model environment appropriately for software applications in the modeling suite. So, today we're going to tackle the most essential element of importing from Rhino to MaxSurf, moving the frame of reference. The objective of today's tutorial is to increase your understanding of how to integrate files produced by a popular CAD software to facilitate further design and analysis using one of the most popular naval architecture modeling programs. By the end of today's lecture, you should be able to identify essential MaxSurf commands used for importing models from other CAD packages, set your basic hull form to a datum waterline, and translate the zero or reference point of a third-party model for further use in the MaxSurf suite. So I'm going to begin by opening my Rhino file and taking a look at the model to make sure it's ready for import into another program. I'll begin by selecting my hull model. And you can see by clicking on the properties pane that my model comprises a single surface. If your model contains multiple surfaces, explode the model into multiple individual surfaces and then we'll go ahead and save the model. Now I'm going to open MaxSurf Modeler. And once I clear all this junk out of the way, I'll move up to the File menu and select Import Rhino.3DM Model. I'll now select the appropriate Rhino file and Modeler will bring it into the model. Now the first step is to move over to the assembly pane, right click on the surface element and select properties. I'm going to rename my surface as hull and then I'm going to click the tick box activating symmetrical. Also, I don't like the yellow color so I'm going to choose a softer purple here. Under direction I'll select projects outside of surface and this will ensure that the surface normals are facing into the direction of the sea for my design. Inspecting the body plan, you can see the symmetrical command now reflects the hull design across the centerline plane. I'll activate the rendering toggle, and we can see the hull render in the perspective window, giving a better visual representation of the 3D model. At this point, we're ready to finish preparing the model for use in MaxSurf stability. Often when we model in another program, MaxSurf may not know which frame of reference to use. Since all other MaxSurf modules perform and report calculations based on this frame of reference, it is essential to locate it correctly. To situate a reference point, open the Data pull-down menu and select Frame of Reference. Select the Other radio button in the Longitudinal Datum column and click Aft Extent. You can see in the reference graphic that the proposed zero point translates to the aft extent of my model. I've now situated my reference longitudinally. However, it is still above the baseline I'd like to use, so I'll now select the baseline radio button representing vertical datum information. Clicking on Find Base, the program seeks out the lowest geometrical feature of my model and assigns the baseline along a plane accordingly. Now I'm going to adjust my datum or design waterline. 
By selecting the DWL radio button, I can enter my own value. From my parametric analysis, I previously knew that I wanted my initial design to consider a draft of 4 meters. So I'll set my DWL at 4 meters. Moving to any other entry window in the dialog, the reference graphic displays the translation of the waterline. Now that I've set my initial waterline, I'll transition back to the longitudinal datum and locate my forward and aft perpendiculars. Select the aft perpendicular radio button and click on set to DWL. Do the same thing for the forward perpendicular. Now take a moment to confirm that your zero point has not translated and is still where you intentionally meant it to be. Otherwise, simply move it back following the steps we've discussed previously. Select OK to apply the settings and close the frame of reference dialog box. Note that in all four views we can now see our general design points of interest, the midship, perpendiculars, baseline, datum waterline, and zero points displayed. At this point, go ahead and save your file as a MaxSurf Modeler file. The file is now ready for further development in MaxSurf Modeler or use in other modules of the suite. All right, that was a very quick overview of how to import a 3D model from another CAD package into MaxSurf for use in the MaxSurf suite. There are some other details about model checking depending on whether you have more surfaces or fewer surfaces. However, those are particular design details that we'll address in a future video. Now that I've discussed how to import a model into MaxSurf, I'd like you to complete the following tutorial assignment. Using your previously designed Rapid Hall model from Rhino, I want you to import the model into MaxSurf Modeler then assign your datum or design waterline as per the results of a parametric analysis, and then set or reset as necessary the reference or zero point of the model to an appropriate location for further use in MaxSurf. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like or subscribe. It's the easiest way I can think of to inform you guys when new content is available. And if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments or email me directly. Your feedback helps me make each tutorial better, so if there's something you're not seeing or would like to learn, let me know so I can develop it for future use.